Congleton. A florin, a shilling, a threepenny piece, half penny and farthing on the stone buried deep. But we're rushing ahead. Where did it begin? Let me see. A grand competition, 1863. The entrance, the start, stone arching, stairs stretching away. How many feet here have marched or trudged or played? Look, a charter, bright with new promise. A free borough forever, thanks to bearded King James. Then, newborn markets and corn splitting mills and fairs and bears and. The Grand Hall. Not skirt swishing tea dance or wartime waltz, but thoroughly modern ladies who meet to chat and jive to a Latin beat. The Minstrel's Gallery. Silver maces for the sergeants of the town, then silver gilt for a Cromwellian crown, proclaiming freedom for Britain's young and old, but crowns and towns are fickle at such times. Let Charles II think he had freed the Albion Isle. The Spencer Room. Shields in every corner, and mayors looking down from seats on high. The coat of arms, with its ton and eels, the conger for congle, the barrel for ton. Ever unprepared, that lion looks on. An entrancing entrance, a fairy tower. Golden coins hoarded long ago, each one cast and punched and polished when the River Dane ran wide and free. Congleton rare with its Congleton bear, not baited or swapped for a Bible today, but sat for a how do you do? Then on our way. The Bridestone Suite, all half moons and barrel sides. E. W. Godwin, who the judges decide will build a new hall for five thousand pounds. Under his windows, round like plump footballs, trophies are lined up. Bright banners are strung. The balcony. And the lion on his barrel looks on as ever, and now he sees bright silks thrown and worked first by hundreds, then thousands of hands double twist and reel, broad silks, handkerchiefs, velvets and ribbons. For years the town shimmered like the ladies it dressed, but fashion is fickle as kings and lords, and soon the old mill was all but gone. The clock tower, hundred and ten feet high. With bells one, two, three for the quarter and the hour. It stands where the town hall has always been. Be it wattle and daub or proud pillared stone, with jury above and dungeons below. Brim full of dancing and cheers and giggles. quiet again in the Campbell suite. On the day the hall opened its doors, the mill closed theirs, and mothers and fathers and children and grandparents watched as old Mr. Jones stood on his head. Hundreds of feet up on the new hall's parapet. No doubt they cheered as they drank their free tea, though we'd done it before at the church in Asbury. of the world, a cloud amongst clouds. Now round, round, Macclesfield to the north, where the chimneys still stretch their necks above their mills. Then east, see the Dane wind its way up to Winkle, 
through quilted fields edged with forest lace. And south to Bidolph's valleys and moors, where the ancient bridestones silently wait. And west to Congleton, the corner town, where the three-clocked spire peeps up to this cloud. Chairs, tables, napkins, balloons. Toasts and wedding vows fill the room. First dances, last dances, first glances between a girl and a boy, then a bride and a groom. Now the lion watches from carved mare's chair as we hold our ribbons high in the air and weave and wind on a bright May day, more weavers and winders than ever before. Something forgotten, down here on the floor. The bustle of business back where it belongs. In the heart of the hall, we nod and rub shoulders, swap notions on progress, on all that's to come. Hidden corners. Inner workings. Great halls must have their cubby holes. Hush! Living on, it has slipped into the stone. Pound notes from Congleton's Lord, eight in all, given each year since 1644. Time with a teacup is time well spent. Where market calls once crackled, now coffee beans do rattle. Books on festivals, food and fates, on walks and talks and local sports, on hikes and lakes and which road to take. No one here but me. How many changes has this old face seen? How many six and seven o'clocks as it eats up our time with a tick and a tock? A call from below and the sound of chains, the jostle of wigs and fur-lined collars. Up the wooden hill to the light they come to stand before the robed men one by one. Be it dungeon, pillory or whipping post or stocks or brank or cooking stool. Let present and future people know that we, Henry de Lacey, have confirmed that the aforesaid town shall be a free borough and may choose to them by themselves a mayor. The chop and cry of the old butcher's shambles. Many watch hungry when the silk mills have gone, but silk hands turn now to fustian frames, where light steel snips and lifts a velvet softness from cotton and flax. Congleton feet are busy again, walking miles to make a yard of velveteen ribbon. Rounded and crest-topped, two town hall eyes, gazing forever at those passing by. The old hall clock, cracking the days into tiny pieces, which strung back together are passing centuries. Now brushes and paint and pencil and pen 
wool woven, pots thrown, metal moulded and bent. The great war has come to Congleton. The women gather here to trundle on their treadles, to thread through each blanket the memory of home. But the laughter returns and the bobbins will whir for happier reasons in future years. The hum and blink of the hard at work office. The tip of the hat and the screens blink back. A boat carved by Angles or Saxons or Danes. Pennies for the poor each Christmas day. Once a year, new shoes, shirts and shifts. William and Henry and Isaac and John. Comfort for the children whose fathers are gone. Just stone and mortar and tile it may be. But under its roof, as before, we will gather to face dark clouds or blue skies at our town's heart together.